<laughs> Welcome so to Omni Dog and Omni Cat Review Show. I'm Omni Dog, and this is my good buddy Omni Cat. How are you doing? Well, I got off work at 7 a.m. this morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Back to that, but I'm awake, so I'm happy. Uh, Reed brought me a latte. I'm good. And I, this is kind of personal, but is your bedtime sometime between when you come home and when you get on the air? Yeah. Snort cocaine the whole day and stay <laughs> up. Oh, I would probably be drifty if I didn't try to sleep. Yeah, I came home. I ate a little something because I hadn't ate all night. Um, and then I read a little bit because I did not finish Blade of the Immortal until this morning. Okay. And then I went to sleep. I didn't ah. sleep enough, but right now I, I went back to overnights this week. And it's just, I mean, as you can just imagine, I'm sure a lot of people in the chat know about a, about that life, but transitioning from a day shift to an overnight, like it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because I just keep waking up in the middle of the day because my body's like, hey, what are you doing? You yeah. taking a nap? Here's, here's two hours. And it's like, no, buddy, I want to sleep. <laughs> so, I mean, they don't even like ease you into it. They're just like daytime, daytime. Oh, hey, Kristen, you're doing uh, overnights for the next year. No, the, you're doing overnights for the next two weeks. And then you're going back to daytime. Well, so it's December. Everyone in my department waited until the last month to take vacation. Oh. So I've been covering weird shifts all month. And then my overnight person was like, hey, peace out in two weeks. I'm leaving. And quitting that's leaving? Quitting leaving. So that's the situation I'm in right now. So now I'm covering overnights because there's no one else until we hire someone. And now it's the holidays. So that's probably not going to happen until hopefully January. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> You, but yeah, you, that's what's happening. Are you a member of a union? No. Oh. No, we don't have that option. <laughs> Do you get <laughs> um, extra pay for doing overnight because it's so sudden? No. No. Uh, I'm going to stop que asking questions because I just don't, I don't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> no. I mean, these are all good questions that I've asked myself. Like, why aren't these things happening? <laughs> we also don't get mandated breaks. So, so that's fun. Yeah, there's a whole situation anyway. Someone someone in my work's gonna watch and be like, What? What's yeah. It's it's a whole thing. Oh, wow. Too many crickets. What's on your shirt yeah. today? Um, it is a, a Grim Reaper with cats. <laughs> so there's cats on the bottom and he's got a little heart. Is that a fun design or is he a character? Um, it's just a random design that oh. I found. Yep. Cool. <laughs> yep. That's, he loves cats. Um, I, I don't know if that was a giphy, uh, a, gi a gif, or um, uh, a video or whatever, but of that cat crawling into the oh. couch. <laughs> that I that's sent one you. Of the yeah. greatest things I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, how is that cat doing that? Oh, it's amazing where they can. Uh, thankfully, our couch is not set up that way. But I've heard stories of like cat, like cats that will just dive into the couch and get like under. The cushions and stuff. Ooh, yeah, uh -oh. that's that's scary for me. I would never want to sit on a cat. Like, <laughs> yeah, <I've laughs> but it's probably been... really warm, which I think is the point. Yeah, I uh, I would always be checking under the mat, the uh, sofa cushion. Yeah, it's that time of year where my cat Willow, if I don't know where she is, there's probably a ninety five percent chance that uh, where Reed sleeps, we've got like one of those little four cubes with the fabric drawers. That we put okay. stuff in and there's a blanket hanging over the top of it so if we pull the blanket up one of the top drawers there's all she's always in it because it's so warm <laughs> so we just started putting we put like a stack of blankets in it <laughs> so it's like that's her bed that's fine like so she just gets in there i don't even know how she gets in there but she does no <laughs> yeah that's that's her warm place <laughs> that is awesome I <laughs> oh that cracks me up uh, I went to the vet one time. I still have this picture. I, I should post it on Instagram. I just went to the vet and there was a cardboard box behind the desk and there was just cat just looking out from it. I'm like, Oh yeah. This if is there's a, a box. Picture. Yeah. Anytime. Cause you know, we've had so many packages lately. <laughs> Anytime there's a, I mean, that's they're in the box immediately. Yeah. They love the box for some reason. Yeah. I don't even have to buy them anything. I'm like, why do I do that? I get the thing out of the box. Like here's your new scratcher. And they're like, no, I'm in this box. This is my box now. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. We do have some comments. <laughs> Professor Flags. The question is, who's going to argue with Jess about that vellum fun cover? Uh, Gabe's not here. He's the one that always <laughs> argues with me about vellum. Uh, let's see. We've got um, Kenny's in the chat. Hey, how's it going? Chris Brogan is agreeing with you that overnights are tough. Does he say what? Mary M thinks Omnicat needs a cat nap or maybe two. <laughs> yeah, probably two. Chris Brogan, when we first got our newer cat, he would hide inside the bottom of the couch. Oh, that's so scary. Eek. So scary. Uh, lots of people. Uh, okay, one question for you is. Uh, okay, wait. I'm guessing since we're ended from Lloyd Wong, I'm guessing since we're near the end of the year that Kristen exceeded her Goodreads goal. I want to know by how much. Did okay. you hit your Goodreads goal and did you exceed it? I'm, I'm looking at it right now. So okay. the first of the year, every year for the past probably five years, my favorite thing to do on New Year's, no, it's not party. No, it's not <laughs> watching the ball drop. It's getting on Goodreads and setting my new Goodreads goal because I'm a nerd. So, and I'm weird about it because I set the goal and I can't change because you can physically change it throughout the year if you want. I won't do it. I won't do it. If I think I can't hit it, I got to hit it anyway. If I think it's too little, I'll just go past it. Like I cannot change it. So I decided the first of the year, 400 bucks. That was my goal. I hit that months ago. Oh. A few months ago. Uh, so right now I'm currently at 510. 510? Yeah. Nice. And I'm still reading. So. Well, I think I'm going to set a goal because Taylor Brown said that's a good way to track the books that you've read that year. Mm -hmm. Because I've read, I input everything into Goodreads that I read this year, but it doesn't say the date that I put it in. And I've got stuff from last year too. And I'm trying to think, how am I going to figure out what I read back in March? I mean, I've got like, I, I don't know how many, actually, I don't know how many books I've got in there, but I've got to figure out here in the next week or so from like my best of 2020 video, what books I read because they're not. I think uh, like the problem, yeah, the problem with the way you're doing it is you're probably not putting them in right when you read them, right? Uh, yeah, I usually come down and do it right away. Well then, so if you go to your read books, it will say when you read it. It will. Okay. And, but Challenge it's when you accepted. inputted it. Challenge accepted. Let's see. I'm looking at it right now. That's what it does. It, it tracks whenever you put it in. Uh, now, I will say the challenge thing is just fun to watch. Yeah. Because it keeps your percentage and it, it does have everything in the year. Because I can go back two years ago. What did I read that year? And I can click on my challenge and I have everything right there. So it is very nice to like keep oh, it like that. It is all in here. What the hell am I complaining about? <laughs> It, again, it is nice to be like, because if you do it next year, you can go back and be like, okay, what did I read? Okay, you can look right then. You know, like Maddie and I, we're going to do our best of show this month. And she's like, I don't know how I'm going to know what I read. And I'm like, that's why I use Goodreads. <laughs> like, I have it all right there. I don't have to question anything. You know, I'm like, did I read that this year? No, it was last year. Okay, cool. Like, so the challenge is really nice to like keep everything in one spot in one year. So it is helpful. Um, it also alerts me that I have not put in anything for December. Uh, so I need to do that right after the show. I know what I have read. It's in a separate pile because I keep separate piles for the Omni Bros Monday show because it's what you've mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. So I always keep a separate pile and then I forget about it. But I, they're right here. So I know what, I, what I've read. Okay, good. I feel much better. Thank you. All it would have taken is for me to look at it a little closer and maybe I could have figured it out for myself instead of embar embarrassing myself on the freaking air. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you want to get like what I love about how I do it, because like I've told you, like if I, if I'm about to read a book, I'm immediately, let's put it on your currently reading shelf. Uh, once I finish, I'm immediately saying I finished it. So I know, okay, this is when I started the book. This is when I ended the book. Okay. And I can review it right there. I can put a star or whatever I want. So if I want to get that specific, like what day did I read like five books? Like I can go back and find that information too. If you're a big nerd and you care about that, like I do. Well, I'm not going to judge you. I think it's fun. It's <laughs> yeah. cool. I, it's I'm cool glad you introduced that. me to, to uh, Goodreads. It's been great. 
now that I know what date I read it. <laughs> now you now you get now you have to set the challenge because I want to know. Okay. If you, if, you, let's say you had to right now. What would your number be for next year? Okay, let me think. You set a goal for four hundred, and is any of that prose or it's all graphic novels? It's everything. So it does include prose. Uh, okay, I don't read any prose anymore because of my YouTube channel. So let me think. Okay, there's 365 days in a year. I will set my goal at 300. Perfect. It seems very attainable for you. Do you think it should be more? You know, see, if you had done the challenge this year, you could know exactly how many you read this year, Let's right? Let's not rehash 2020. <laughs> Let's just move on. So I'm like, to 2021. I don't know. I just think you read a lot. So that's that should be good for you. Like, you should be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll do 300 January 1st. And I'll text Next. you and I'll say, Please what do. are you doing, nerd? <laughs> I'm doing my Goodreads challenge at like midnight. Yeah, and that's what I'll be doing. And I'll be at work, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Because I got to up my goal this reason. year. Sorry? I got to up what? my goal for next year because I went yeah, past so, my goal, you know. So what are you upping it to? Or do you want to say? Like I mean. Surprise? Does anyone care that much? <laughs> well, there, yeah, there was like five people. Someone interested does. In what you were. Um, what you read what uh yeah no people do care as a matter of fact i i think i'm gonna go a little crazy and set a pretty high goal yeah actually seriously <laughs> yeah 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 i'm gonna do it a fat man i feel like a rookie 300 well, here's, here's the thing right so you gotta I, I put everything in there so manga everything so I'm like, I could pad some of that with like a shorter trade, some of the Marvel trades, right? Like you think about stuff like that. Yeah, they count. And, you know, I know. So, but I'm like, that's a, that, I got, I got stuff I got to read. So I'm like, I want to go crazy. So I'm going crazy. I've decided. A thousand. This is exciting. Okay. I, I'm yeah. kind of interested, really interested now. Maybe we'll have a bi-monthly updates when we come on like where are you at in your goal and we're like i'm behind <laughs> like, well i wonder if i should up mine well no, I, was, I'm, I just that just sounds crazy it is crazy I, I, <laughs> but it does sound fun too uh now you read 400 i forget what taylor read he he reads a lot of crime novels um and that takes a little more time mm-hmm I think he maybe, uh, I think he maybe read two fifty, but that's impressive because he includes crime novels. Uh, okay, I'll say three fifty. Great. That's the best you're gonna get out of me. <laughs> by the end of the show, we're gonna keep getting you up there. Yeah, right. We'll, I'll be at six fifty by the end of the show. <laughs> oh, we have a great compliment from my buddy Dan Cullen. Love the show as it's the coolest comic book punks I know of. Nice. Dan Thank you. Was nice enough to send me a Harley Quinn variant that I had never seen before. And I've decided what I'm going to do. I have a comic book spinner rack that my wife, a vintage one that my wife got me for my birthday 20 years ago from eBay. Um, and it's got all vintage comics on it. But I think I'm going to rotate in some variants, like all variants, since I have a few variants, and that'll be one of them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a and I'm going to have a variant comic book spinner rack. That's a fun idea. Yeah, dude, I got to change it up. It's it's been the same comics for 15 years. So mm. how often can I look at the first appearance of Deadshot or Bullseye, rather? <laughs> I've seen this cover for 15 years now. Um, so, okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I may do that tonight. It's a good idea. Because I'm a nerd and it's a Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night is usually my night to play with my action figures. Okay, wait, I have to answer this. Uh, because my daughter's... 
saying something. Uh, what? Oh, Saturday night is usually my night to play with action figures. So I may do both uh, because I have a lot of action figures and I discovered some room up on the shelves. I pushed some books back and it made some room, but I also lost some room because I used the N-Man 40 double stack <laughs> method on a couple extra cubes today. And I don't have room for my absolute favorite, um, two of my absolute favorite figures, which went on the Daredevil shelf, were these two Electra figures. This is like the select figure, and I've, I've had this for years, and I yeah, love cool. this one. Um, and then this is, this is even a bit prettier. Nice. Yeah, she looks great. And then I'm trying like heck to get Daredevil to pose like he did on that cover where he's just drooped over the cross. That's not quite it, is it? <laughs> no, he's, he's not cooperating at all. He's like, brrr. He's like tiptoeing. He's balleting. He's pirouetting. Yeah, and the more I look at it, the more it looks like Ben Affleck to me, which bugs me. <laughs> That doesn't, it looks like Ben Affleck. But he's your favorite Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> I should watch that movie just because I, I love Daredevil, but... And you love that soundtrack, right? Uh, I actually, I've never listened to it. Is it a good soundtrack? Uh, it's just very movie of that time soundtrack. Uh, One of those. Probably some share rock in there, you know. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Marza Clip loves my shirt. Thank you. It's a little cold in my basement tonight, so I had to put on some flannel. I'm cold in here, too. Uh, let's see. Um, let's, I love the year in books infographic stuff. That's the best part. Of, of what? Of Goodreads. Oh. So right now, you could actually, you should be able to do it. You don't have to do the challenge, I don't think, for it to allocate it. But when you go into your account, it'll be like, hey, how's your year in books been? And you can click that. And it'll tell you the shortest book you read and the longest book you read and the most popular book on Goodreads you read and the least popular. And oh. it'll show you some ratings and then it should go through like what you've read that year. Uh, I don't think you have to do the challenge, but I, I don't know because I always do. So I think that just automatically does it with the books you've read this year. Oh, T. Really Lar Blunt is in the chat and he's saying it's warm and toasty down in here and... <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. This is Mississippi. <laughs> uh, Bobby Keating, he's a man of my. Uh, yeah, spending Saturday night reorganizing a spinner rack and playing with action figures. A man after my own heart. That does sound like a good night. I'm doing it. It's a good <laughs> night. Put on a record. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just got um, Cowboy Bebop soundtrack in the mail. Nice. I'm that on. Oh, I have a record by me. <laughs> you may be you. interested in you won't. Uh, this is an early present from Reed. I mean, we were oh just talking about Avril Lavigne, remember? <laughs> I didn't know you guys had a record player. Is that a joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> we love vinyl. We're uh, huge vinyl I, people. I, I guess um, we just have never really talked about it. Yeah, I guess we should. Well, no, we, have a, we have a total does Reed, does Reed have like a punk rock collection of all his punk stuff? Oh, yeah. 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 You have to have yeah, a vinyl when we, player. When we moved in together, though, I had more records than he did. So we like getting the records from like my parents' house to like our new house was a nightmare because they're so heavy. So yeah. that was a lot. And then we we had a few records in common. So that was kind of cool to be like, okay, who had who has the better quality one or the better color in this record? And then we would like get rid of the other one. <laughs> so there was some of that. Uh, when we moved in together, we definitely did not merge our collections because uh, the example of what my wife likes would be Streisand Superman. And a star is born with Barbra <laughs> Streisand. Yeah. And I'm sitting there with, uh, like, Charge GBH and The Damned and uh, all these <laughs> other punk bands, DOA. And she's like, are those groups? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't really like them. No, my Led that's, Zeppelin album. That's so funny because Reed cites 
him looking through my record collection as like the first one of the first times I think that he knew that like okay this is gonna work out like <laughs> we're gonna be in a relationship for a long time because I would have all these records that like were like out of you know print and like he really loved oh. or like some live records he always wanted and he's like how do you have this and I'm like I love it or whatever like it was a whole thing where he's like I love this I love this here's some ska stuff he likes here's some other oh, stuff he likes yeah. so yeah that was fun yeah, no. I I'm my wife with my record I, collection. If, <laughs> if I based my love for my wife on her record collection, <laughs> I'd be alone right now. <laughs> That's there'd for the best. No, there'd be no Kelly Bragg, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think you're down in your basement playing with your action figures, putting on a Star is Born. I can see that. A Star is Born. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Christopherson on the cover. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh my, I'm going to throw up right now. <laughs> I can't stand that era. That 70s era of schlocky stuff. Um, Just don't tell her that. Oh, she knows. Yeah, you're like, this is how we have a good relationship. She knows. Yeah, I said, get rid of those albums. I'm never playing them, and you don't have your own record player anymore. Mm, so she nice. sold them all, all at a yard sale. So, Well, that's good on her, then. <laughs> <laughs> record are just they saw up. Yeah, I know what Killer was referring to. He something got away from him that he really wanted. Um, uh, and I understand the uh, pain. It's a bummer. Um, can't tell him there is a ska banjo kazooie vinyl coming. There is. I didn't know. I can't tell him if I don't know. That's exciting. Uh, Tealar, tell us more about that. I have yeah, the banjo kazooie vinyl. Box set. We both want that, yeah. But I, I would love a ska version of that. I think ska would be better than the actual album. The vinyl is just sounds from Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Not <laughs> one of the better purchases I made. It's it's very N sixty four inch goofball music. And uh, let's see. What turntables do y'all have? I'm looking for a new one. Got all my ska vinyl. Um, nice. I'm going to have to go look at one real quick. I know it's a TAC deck. Um, but um, actually, you can PM me uh, real big, and I can tell you, I love my turntable. I got it about four years ago to replace the other one I had. Um, but it's great. Oh, Respawn Records. It's dropping soon and sounds great. Okay. I will look into that. I will, too. Oh, Bobby, you don't know. <laughs> we, we've got I'd say FOMO, it's worse. We've got FOMO worse than comic book collecting. Yeah. Like a pressing of like 300, it'll never happen. That kind of like thing. That? Like if something's like a record store day pressing a 300, it's like, yeah, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there's these things that go on sale and they're limited. And if you're not there within the first 13 seconds, you're not going to get it unless you see it on eBay for 10 times the price. Vinyl's way harder to collect mm -hmm. uh, than books are as far as getting what you want um, uh, before it, because before it goes out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tyler and I were just, as a matter of fact, I'm like Tyler's alarm clock. I, <laughs> I think it was two weeks ago. I said, "Okay, there's a, a, a TMNT vinyl going on sale this Friday," uh, and he goes, "Oh, okay, can't wait." A minute. So I tell him Thursday there's a TMNT vinyl tomorrow. Remember? He goes, "Oh my gosh, I forgot about it." <laughs> then Friday, when it goes on sale at like about quarter to 11 my time, I said, are you remembering about the TMNT? No, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> said, yeah, how are you a CPA? Are you, how do you even remember things? <laughs> Write stuff down more, maybe. Yeah, I put it in my calendar and set an alarm. Mm, because that's what I have to do. Um, I have at least, Tyler says, I have at least 50 vinyl I don't even want that I bought because of FOMO. I, yeah, I, I understand that totally. It's rough. Like, sometimes I just have to ignore that vinyl exists 
because I'm like, it's too expensive and there's too much of it I want. So I'm just like, I have to ignore that for a while because I, I would go crazy and I can't do that. Yeah. It's Mary hard. Brings up a good point. Vinyl breaks my heart a lot, especially on record store day. Yeah. If, if you are not first in line from 6 p.m. the day before spending the night in front, you're not going to get what you want. Yeah. If this year was like, I don't know if it was harder or easier. Like, at least there was the option of like being online, but a lot of places weren't doing that or there were only certain amounts. And then there were even more people waiting online to resell it because that you get the flippers in any copy, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. Um, and it's probably the worst in records as far as like versus books versus maybe even like action figures and stuff. Like it's real bad with records and the limited releases and stuff like it's bad. Uh, I I agree with that because when you see a book like that uh, a super uh, a super whale I don't know Captain Britain what's it going for four times its price on eBay three times its price records are like 10 times their price and people get so fomoed out they will pay it. Yeah. Not me, but some no, people yeah. will. I won't even go that route. I'm like, it's gone forever and I just can't. I've, I've already like, I'm just like, I get it. I can't have everything. It's gone yeah. forever. Fine. <laughs> like, yeah. There's several that have broken my heart and I'm sad I don't have, but I'm like, maybe one day they'll repress them. If people care enough, it does happen. Just like reprints, you know? Yeah. And I have a head start on everybody since I've been collecting records, just like comic books since I was a little kid. So even though I, I lost a bunch in the flood, um, a lot of them turned out to be not ones I cared that much about and also ones I don't remember because when I had to throw them out, I just closed my eyes and threw them <laughs> in a big trash bag, two big trash mm -hmm. bags. And said, I don't want to know what I threw out. It's probably for the best, right? Yeah, that was a little painful, but it had to be done yeah. because they were ruined. It sucks. Oh, okay, uh, Lloyd. I will binge Star Trek Discovery uh, next week. Thank you uh, for remem reminding me. I will binge that this week. Um, let us... Uh, okay, wait. I want to see if there's anything else. Uh, Tyler is still... Uh, Tyler, you better not pay over cover price for that one you want. I know what you're talking about, and that that is going to be a, how much, Tyler. Tell me how much. Don't say the name of it, but tell me how much it's going for on eBay. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> Sorry, it's a slippery slope when yeah, you start doing that. You know. Here's a funny confession because he really does. I could sigh. I really know too much <laughs> jet stuff. That really is true. There's people that know stuff uh, about me that I haven't. No idea. Sam Cluxon, I haven't seen him in a while. He knows stuff about me that I, I don't even remember saying on the <laughs> air. I don't know how he remembers that stuff. Um, so what would you like to talk about first in this uh, review of ours? Three, um, but I'm not paying that much. That's not bad, Tyler. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's not even twice the price of what it was. If is I it like really a, wanted that, I'd pay three fifty. I'm totally enabling him. Is it a box set? Yeah, it's a box set of two hundred dollars. That's rough. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, Lloyd Wong is wanting Blade, so maybe we should do that. Uh, Blade of the Immortal. Yeah. Deluxe edition, volume one. And this is a manga that was mirrored for people like me <laughs> so they could read it. It was it was rearranged into Western style um, so that it's easier to read. For me, I, I don't know how, uh, how manga readers feel about it. Um, I, I, will, uh, I, I will lead off with the art that I thought the art was beautiful. I, I think- I agree. That, I think this art is something I could read all I could look at all the time. I, I 
was very transfixed by this art. And I thought it was interesting where they explained the swastika in the beginning um, and how it got bastardized in, uh, after 1910. But before that, it had a, um, a good meaning, a, 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 a powerfully um, positive meaning. Wait, you want me to, let me highlight you. So yeah, you I'm showing some art. Some, uh, try yeah. not to show uh, body parts flying around. <laughs> yeah. It's brutal. It's very brutal. It is. Yeah, this art's incredible. Yeah, I, I, this is, um, I, I like this better than the art in that other manga I read, which was, uh, what was that one everybody loves? Uh, <laughs> just one random manga. Um, um the one that just got all the deluxe editions that everybody's crazy about. Oh, uh, Berserk. Berserk, yeah. I like the art better than in Berserk. I mean, I I hear that gets better. So, there's that. But well, yeah, this is not going to get the chance with me. <laughs> well, yeah, you'll never show. <laughs> well, I'll never know. But uh, yeah, this is incredible. Art. Yeah, the presentation of this book is super nice. Super nice hardcover with mm -hmm. a ribbon and. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, lots of good background uh, stuff that looks really, really good. Um, I will say there was one problem I had with the book, and it did keep me from enjoying it to the max. I liked how the story started out where the girl uh, needed... Um, a bodyguard to help her get revenge. I was on board with that. But I, there wasn't enough differentiation in, in some of the main characters for me to understand it really well. Like a couple, like you not like, like who's this who? guy, bald guy, I can, you know, I can yeah. figure out who he is. But the main character has somebody that looks just like him in it. Yeah. The main I was with you. Yeah. And the main girl character has someone also in it that looks like her, uh, except when she chopped off her hair, and then you can finally tell um, mm -hmm. that, that, she, that that is her. Um, that that hurt my enjoyment of it a little a lot actually because i had a hard time telling who was who um there was not i i could actually read it as opposed to the uh, eastern style of reading um i thought the story was okay i it, it was okay with me um i did i didn't find it um I, I peace and love, peace and love to all manga readers, and I am glad you enjoy manga. But I really just think this proves now that I can read it that the the subjects just aren't really for me. I, I disagree with you. I don't you think do. you can generalize like that because I read far and wide a lot of manga. I was not in love with this. Oh, okay. And I've read a bunch. And I think it's just anything like you're like, oh, let's say you read Hawkeye and you're like, I hate Hawkeye and oh. I hated the Hulk. So I hate all Marvel. Ah, like, that's what okay. it sounds like to me. That's you a good know? point. That's yeah, a good point. So because I think, I, I think from what I hear, this is a classic samurai story with yeah. some twist. And that's kind of what it said at the beginning, right? Yeah. Uh, I've never read anything like that. I didn't hate this at all. I'm interested. Um, I had the same issue with you. I got confused about who was who. Yeah, I did. A lot of the time. And I think part of that, the art's beautiful, but it's also very muddled and sketchy sometimes. Right, I agree with that. Which hinders my understanding who's who. And I wonder for anyone in the chat who's read it, does that get better? Because 
you know, there's a lot of series people start and then in later volumes, the art gets clearer, cleaner, maybe they get better at depicting people. I don't know if that changes. Um, but, you know, I enjoyed myself. I kind of want to know what happens right at the end. But yeah, I, I, I just feel like I'm not sure that's a general statement you can okay. say for you're all right, manga. Right. I retract that. You're right. I, I will say that I did not enjoy it enough to continue. Um, it it was interesting, but the, the, the muddled fight scenes and the difficult part of differentiating uh, the characters detracted this, to the story from me. And I, uh, the main character, the guy, is very unlikable. I didn't yeah. find him, which is fine. I mean, you're gonna have unlikable characters um, and she's so naive that I don't know how she ex uh, manages to hang out with him. I they seem like a very unlikely coupling. Um, so I will say that I found this to be just kind of a five out of a ten. It was kind of interesting, and but I'm not gonna follow it any further. But you're right because about manga because there is one manga, mangaka, that I will still be interested in seeing his stuff, and that's Jinji Ito. Um, I still have a couple more books of his to read, and they're easy to follow, mm -hmm. even though I'm reading them backwards. Um, there's a clear delineation as to who the characters are. Um, they, I mean, you don't get mixed up with who the characters are at all. Um, it is his, his stories are vile and repulsive. Um, there was that one in Drifting Classroom that almost made me throw up. <laughs> but I, I will continue to give Junji Ito's books um, a read because I, I, I do like those. Uh, books. So you're so you're right. I can't just generalize on manga, um, but I think I'm gonna sort of draw the line there because I found a, a, a guy whose art I can follow and whose stories are interesting and disgusting to me. <laughs> um, and for some reason, I <laughs> I'm attracted to those early repulsive stories. I get it. I love it. It's also like just so. You, his stories are just so unique. I mean, we always say that, but yeah. it's the truth. Like, and I don't, it's something I don't find uh, that specific, whatever he has in Western comics. So there is something weird and different and that he's doing that's like, it's just magic. It, it, it is because now we can walk in any bookstore now and I can get a, a Juji Ito mug. I mean, that's so bizarre, but that's yeah. how popular and like, and, you know, popular things are popular for a reason. Like, he's really good. Right. So we're not the only ones that like him and his repulsive stories. Lots That's of right. people, lots and lots <laughs> of people like the those disgusting stories. Yeah. And uncles, I'm sorry. You, you missed the tangents. We started out the first half hour with a big tangent. We can go on now if you want. Books. <laughs> but, but you never know. We could spring off into another tangent at any moment. So hang in there it's possible if you have it's questions nice. just throw them at us what's that if he has any questions or anyone does just throw them our way oh yeah we love doing question and answer wait a sec wasn't it drifting classroom uh dissolving oh, classroom dissolving i apologize yeah. professor flex dissolving classroom yeah drifting i apologize yeah i got it mixed up um, Ramina, yeah, Ramina just came out, uh, so I might read that. I, we should read I, it together. Okay. I just ordered it, so. Is, um, is his stuff ever on Hoopla? I guess probably not, or is no. it? No. No, there's okay. no, um, see, Viz publishes that, yeah, there's no Viz stuff on there, sadly. Yeah, I'm, I am willing to read his stuff, but I think that's where I'm going to draw the line. I'm not interested in anybody else's stuff because a lot of it that I've read just hasn't held my interest like Jinji Ito's stuff. 
Um, so, oh, here's a good question. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. But I also no. don't like pineapple. <laughs> so oh. I wouldn't put it anywhere. <laughs> you don't like pineapple. I love pineapple. I don't like fruit on my pizza. Mm. I can have a veggie pizza. I can have meat on my pizza. Not a big fan of having uh, fruit on my pizza. Also, that usually goes with ham, right? Like ham and pineapple. And I hate yeah. ham. Oh, you don't dig ham or pineapple? No. No, so that what, just sounds terrible. What, what, uh, if you ordered a pizza, what would you get on it? You know, I like a classic pepperoni. Uh, I like some banana peppers. Yeah. Uh, feta cheese. Oh, feta. Feta cheese on pizza. Ooh, it's my favorite. Uh huh. Yeah. I'd put spinach. I mean, that's good. You yeah. know, red peppers. Yeah. We rarely eat pizza anymore. Yes, yeah, same. I we miss it. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're going back on our whole thirty diet January first, um, because we've uh, during the pandemic, the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, we didn't know if we were going to, you know, live. <laughs> March eighth, March fifteenth, we were like, oh, okay, we're going to die. So we just said, let's let's do whatever we want. Let's just eat whatever we want, and that kind of just carried through the entire year oh. and I think you're not the only ones. Yeah. I, I put on some serious weight and it's time for me to lose it again. So we won't be getting any pizza, but yeah, we, we were pretty much like this pandemic sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to deny myself that uh, cup of frozen peanut M&Ms that I like so much. I mean, you could still get pizza because what we do, we don't get pizza anymore, but we get cauliflower pizza sometimes. Oh, yeah. where's, delicious Ooh, the crust is made out of cauliflower yeah is that a local place uh i mean you can get it anywhere now i think you just have to make sure because there's some pizza places that offer cauliflower crust and it's like half flour half cauliflower and it's oh. like that's not real but if you find the place like we do have a good local place that's just pure cauliflower and it's so good and mm. you don't feel bad about yourself <laughs> like yeah it's, yeah it's good yeah um I I would definitely uh, try that. Um, you can get it frozen too. Check out your uh, local oh, fridge. Okay. Yeah. Just did you get Dead Man and her Spectre? Have you done an overview of them? Uh, yes, I did a Spectre overview. It was a couple months ago. It's on my channel. And as soon as Dead Man comes in, I'm immediately doing an overview of that. And I'm also going to do an overview of Peter Bag's Hate collection which is has been in transit for like three months so it should arrive anytime it's like half my packages they're <laughs> stuck out and i don't even check track anymore i'm like i know what it's gonna say <laughs> just stuck somewhere yeah <laughs> uh let's see do, 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 do. Kenny Crayley, Jess, are you excited for any of the new creative teams DC Comics announced recently? For me, the Superman family books and Nightwing I'm most excited for, as well as Stargirl. Um, I, I think that I agree with you on Superman and Nightwing, but I don't re remember who's writing Stargirl or drawing it. But I... Uh, I do remember being excited about Superman and Nightwing, but I can't remember who the creative team is on Stargirl. Um, Lars Gunderson, not a Ito fan. Uzumaki is the first thing I ever read by him, and that made me an Ito fan. Actually, I feel like I want to get... I sold Dissolving Classroom, and I think I want it back. Even though it made me almost get sick. Uh, if we get questions, did you did you get both? Did you both get a chance to read that Lemire's Black Label question book yet? I have not. You mentioned that one on last week's show with Taylor, and I loved it. Uh, it's right here at the top of my reading pile. Um, I uh, I want to read it soon before the end of the year because i'm sure it's probably going to be a top book of mine for 2020 
Um, so I'm going to try and read it in the next couple of weeks because we've only got what the heck date is it? The 19th. We have like one, one full week and a half. I think it's one and a half weeks. Ugh. Starting well, next week. I better get reading it. Yeah, I just uh, borrowed that from Hoopla, so oh, I'll okay. read it soon too. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. That might be one of the first ones I read. I'm glad you loved it, um, Ben. Do 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 pepperoni. Like the thing Americans invented because salami wasn't fatty enough. Don't start your America bashing in here, I do. <laughs> uh, okay, something about manga, 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 manga. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. You only care about the things you care about. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've already said I don't want to read any other manga except for Junji Ito, so I, I don't need any more recommendations. Thank you for your recommendations. I'm I'm super happy that you guys enjoy the manga that you do, but I've settled, my mind is settled now on Junji Ito, and that's it. Because if you look around, I have 40 years worth of books <laughs> and probably 20 years left of life, so I'm in trouble. So I can't be throwing manga in too. You already got that double stack, you know. <laughs> you you are in trouble. <laughs> I am. I am in big trouble. Um, question book feels very much feels like what an O'Neill. Ooh, what an O'Neill question book would be like in 2020. Uh, excited to see your Dead Man overview. I only need the tiniest nudge to buy the book. <laughs> I will nudge you into buying the book if it's any good. I, I know all the stories. Everybody's kind of on tenterhooks as to how much Neil Adams messed with it. I am going to go on record. I haven't got it yet. I know he completely redid the first issue that he was on, which was the second issue in the series. Completely redrew it, completely recolored it. Um, but that's the only thing that he messed with in the Dead Man series. I really don't think, because there are other artists and writers in that book, I really don't think they would have allowed him to go in and completely redo his own work on all of that. First of all, that's a big job, and he's 79 or 80 or something. I don't know if he's up for it, but I'm going to go on record as saying, and I could be wrong, but I'm going to go on record as saying, I bet we're going to be happy with it because it's only going to include that one really horribly colored and drawn first issue. So I will nudge you, buddy. I'm a nudging you. Um, so I can get into Black Hammer first and wait a little on Blade. Yeah, buy all the Black Hammer. Yeah, oh yeah. Right I now. agree with that. <laughs> uh, here's a good question. Where's a good place to start with Fantastic Four? Do you read Fantastic Four at all? I don't think I've read any Fantastic Four. Okay, I have read enough that I can actually answer that. And I would say that would be the Wade Micro Roringo, Ro <laughs> Roringo, <laughs> the late Mike Roringo are as the artist. Mark Wade's the author. Uh, that Fantastic Four is fantastic it is great easy to get into easy to understand don't have to have any background in it it's um, it's very self-explanatory it's really fun it's super fun super interesting very well written I 100% recommend that to any uh, newcomers um, some people like Burns run uh, I feel personally that that draws on older stuff to know some of the things, but some people feel passionately about Burns Run. Um, don't start with Matt Fraction's Fantastic Four. That's a mistake. Um, let me see, uh, because I still have the Fantastic Four and the three hardcovers, um, and you can't read Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four without, that's like the last, that's the greatest Fantastic Four. But you got to know a lot about the Fantastic Four before that thing makes any sense. Um, 
uh, Hickman's is just, it's the greatest one I read, but you got to have some background first. So read that Mark Wade Fantastic Four and you will be way happy. Um, just watch in 2021 Cy Spurrier and Grant Morrison will come out with manga series and Jess will be all about <laughs> manga uh, yeah. okay we'll see um, yeah that's what we were just talking about the dead man omnibus uh, I don't think it will I think it will just include the first issue of Adam's run which was the second issue in the series back in the late sixties. And he completely redrew it and recolored it. And I think that's going to be it. I don't think he's going to have gone over every single dead man story that he wrote and drew. And I will say that as bad of a writer as Neil Adams is now back then he actually wrote well, dead man was pretty interesting and he wrote a good mystery. It was really good. Okay, here's Aiku saying, I knew nothing about FF and still enjoyed the Hickman stuff. But yeah, there's references and stuff, such. What is that? Is that like a tongue sticking out? Yeah. Thing? What does that mean? Like, blah, blah, blah. What, what does that mean? Just in... like, a, yeah, there's references and such, huh? Like. Okay, because he uses it a lot and I'm not familiar with with the, the typing emojis. With the yeah, that's a, that's a tongue, yeah. Okay. I can't pronounce your name, but thank you for tuning in. I'm really anxious nowadays. Do you have a feel-good comic to recommend me? Greens from Greece, love your content. Thank you. Um, Kristen and I, I bet, can both come up with feel-good comics. I was going to say, we should do a show on this because this is something I'm constantly looking for. They're probably my favorite kind of comics. Yes, yeah. we all love a hard-hitting. Essex County is my favorite book, but I don't want to read that every day. <laughs> like, yeah. I would be sad every day. Um, so yeah, there's so many I can recommend. I would start with my go-tos, which is Lumberjanes and Giant Days. Well, you just took my first choices out. <laughs> Um, which is good. Those are two great books. I, I also highly recommend them. Um, uh, I, I love them both. Um, Taylor and I, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I was in my panic phase, we did feel good books for DC and Marvel. Um, so let me think what. Um, yeah, that was a good show. I remember that show now. Oh, thank um, you. We should do feel good, not DC and Marvel. Feel good. Books that aren't DC and Marvel. Indie comics. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Then, uh, I'm also I gonna totally... throw out uh, Peanuts. I think that is a nice warm blanket of an enjoyment for anyone, I think, you know? Right. Pe Mutts. Like if you like strip books. Oh, like... Mutts is great. Yeah. That's a go-to for me too, if I want to feel nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me see what some of mine are. Uh, <laughs> I love the unbelievable Gwenpool. She is mm. a Wyatt. It's a well one. drawn, very funny. It's six trade paperbacks. I don't know if it's ever going to get collected. Um, I love it. It is lighthearted and pokes fun at every Marvel trope. Uh, so I, I highly recommend Unbelievable Gwenpool. Uh, I'd say along those same lines, uh, all new Wolverine. I was going to say that too. I totally agree with that. All Honey Badger Wolverine. alone <laughs> will just make you happy. So I highly recommend getting that omnibus. Um, uh, Hooniverse recommends Bone. Bone oh, okay. yeah. That's a great one. Um, we're, we're both looking around like, what else is there? <laughs> yeah, what else is there? And I, I, uh, I'm trying to think. If you like superhero books, New Frontier is a great superhero book from DC uh, that I highly recommend. Uh, that's a that's a superhero book. Ms. Marvel, I think, mm -hmm. is a feel good book because she's so awesome. It's a superhero book 
with a twist that it's it's kind of lighthearted. She gets in serious situations, but it, it's a little bit lighthearted, and you can really enjoy Kamala Khan. And um, I don't know if you can identify with her, but you can feel what she's feeling, and she still makes light of a lot of situations, like Spider Man does. Um, Let's see. What I would no no no. <laughs> um, there's a uh, lot of um, there's a lot of Instagram comics that I could recommend that come out in collections if you're into that. But if you need something like right now, uh, you know this isn't probably for everyone, but I adore it. It's called Our, Our Super Adventure. This is their last book, so it's extra cute. Um, but it's Sarah Grayley and her partner Steph. And she does these four panel comics and you can read like all of them on her Instagram. So you can check them out there if you don't want the little collections, but these are really nice uh, collection books, but it's just about their life. Uh, their little funny moments throughout their life together. Um, they do have cats and that's really entertaining, <laughs> but, but it, they're all really feel good and they'll just make you laugh, you know? Um, and her jokes are really funny and relatable. So there's that. I also recently read uh, Frankie comics, which just happens to be beside me. These are um, little comics about this cat, Frankie. This is also nonfiction, and you can check out uh, Mixtape Comics on Instagram, and you can find them all there. So this is also just little, like, bits about people's lives, and they're all funny, and it's it's a good time. They're very entertaining. I love stuff like this. So if you need something right now and you're feeling sad, um, you can find a lot of good material on Instagram that people, I don't know if they realize that sometimes, you know, because we all want to buy stuff. But if you can't or you need it right now, there's a lot of good stuff online. Um, our next show is January 2nd. Do you want to make it uh, feel good books? Sure. Let's you do it. Independent or whatever you want. Yeah. I'm in. Okay. So. Um, I may just repeat some of those, but. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably yeah. repeat those. But uh, our Greek friend, I understand your anxiety. Um I completely understand your anxiety. Uh, comic. Somebody else recommended uh, Calvin and Hobbes. That's a great mm -hmm. one too. Um, so we will do for you a feel good episode on January second. Um, but uh, hang in there, and uh, things are going to get better. I have a strong feeling that twenty twenty one is going to be a hell of a lot better than this year. And that's not going to take much. That's a low bar. <laughs> yeah. But, that bar is um, underground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can step over 2020. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I totally get the anxious feeling. And um, we would be happy to um, do a um, uh, lighter reads, um, enjoyable reads type thing. Wait, what are, what are we going to call it? Fun reads, happy Feel reads. good? Feel good, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good title, the way they put it. Uh, Klaus is good for my coup. Hero Bear and the Kid, that's something yeah. you and I both reviewed. That's great. But, yeah, that is good. These are good recommendations. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I can't wait for the all-new Wolverine either. Um, okay, good. That was a good question. Why don't we go on to which book would you like to talk about next? Um, let's do Hawkeye. Hawkeye? Hawkeye, yeah. Hawkeye. <laughs> You'd be happy to know that I took off both dust jackets to read these books. I ah. still got them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what they look like with the dust jackets on. Yeah, here are them off. I don't know if you can tell. This did bother me, though, because this is volume one or three. I'm not positive. I'll have to look inside. <laughs> and then the second one, you can tell maybe a little bit the middle one. The purple's a little different. Like oh, they, yeah. they traded uh, the outer ring for the middle ring. Yeah. And then they went back to the same thing for the third one. And I'm like, what are we doing here, Marvel? <laughs> because now that they're naked, I have to look inside to figure it out. <laughs> <Naked>. Like, why? <laughs> So, oh, got him in the right order. Okay, good. Okay. I probably did that because I was going to be so confused. Yeah. Uh, so the first one we read was the Hawkeye. I, well, she has two books. I have the Hawkeye Omnibus. Um, 
and uh, it's got Clint Barton as a slum building owner uh, that is uh, constantly under fire from these Russian guys that say bro a lot. Everything's bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Bro, this, bro that. Bro, 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 bro. And they're in track suits. They're up to no good. And uh, I, I had never seen this side of Hawkeye before. Um, I'm trying to think how I would describe him in in this because he's clearly not really in control of his life. He um, he is he's bad with uh, expressing his feelings. He doesn't do well um, with long term commitments to girlfriends and or wives. Uh, he has a hard time committing to anything or doing the right thing. He wants to be a good guy. He's an Avenger. They don't show him that much being an Avenger. He's happy to be an Avenger, but um, they don't. Uh, he, he's a he's a kind of a screw up in his regular life, even though he wants to do good. Um, so he buys this building and screws up these Russian plans to detonate the whole block. Uh, and it's under constant attack by all these, uh, not only the Russians, but other people too. And so he's constantly having to defend it. And there's other stories happening uh, as it goes along. Then there's a big long story about Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop's in the first part with him Kate Bishop Hawkeye goes out to LA and there's a big story arc about that. And then we finish up with, I believe, we finish up, or does that finish it up? Uh, yeah, then we finish it up with um, the bad guys coming back and having it out with Hawkeye, who they, the Bronx uh, slang calls him Hawkeye. Hawkeye. <laughs> Um, and they all say, bro, uh, the art that David Aha does is extremely good. Um, it's not throughout the book, but you, you will recognize it and be impressed with it. In my opinion, he draws it really well. Um, it's got a good sense of humor, in my opinion. Very good sense of humor. Um, Hawkeye is uh, very vulnerable, but he's created a lot of the problems himself. Uh, Kate Bishop tries to help him. His ex-girlfriend and ex-wives try to help him. I think he even cheats on a current girlfriend. Um, and he... <laughs> he pulls out all the crazy arrows to deal with uh, a lot of the situations, like a sonic arrow, boomerang arrow, splody arrow, um, dust bomb arrow, and other things to um, to deal um, with all the various uh, people that are after him. And there's lots of really, in my opinion, interesting subplots that have to do um with how he came into possession of money and there's a girl involved that's involved with the russians and this and that but there's a lot of interesting stories that go on um but to me by the uh end of before it starts with kate's run um I kind of had gotten tired of the bro stuff um, and that building. It seemed very limited. He was always in his, uh, first of all, he's got a great dog named Lucky that likes mm -hmm. pizza. And he will be featured and has on the one eye. Sorry? Yeah. Has one he eye. Has yeah. one eye. Um, and he's a great dog. Um, uh, but, but by the end, before Kate started, I. I sort of got a little burnt out on the bro with him being in that building constantly trying to defend people. It seemed a little repetitive and just in time, Kate Bishop went to LA. I felt that Kate's adventures for me personally um, 
were the highlight of the book. I thought Kate versus Madame Mask um, was really fun and really interesting. And I really enjoyed Kate Bishop Hawkeye um, and everything she does. Now, one question I have for you in particular, because it pulls so heavily on uh, pop, pop culture history from the 60s is number 16, uh, I'm sorry, um, issue 16 that dealt with, uh, let me get the guy's names. Um, Will Bryson and his brother Gray, the Bryson brothers. Um, did you get all the references to what this was take off on? No. Ah, okay. I wondered if anybody would. Um, this is a takeoff on the Beach Boys. Mm. Um, because Brian Wilson had a big beard. He had his piano in a sandbox in his house. He, uh, in this story, it um, talks about this lost album that the Bryson brothers were working on that was going to be the greatest thing ever. And, and back in the mid early sixties till forever, Brian Wilson was working on an album called Smile. <clears throat> and it never got released back then. It was supposed to be his, um, his masterpiece. And he started to have mental problems. Um, now, his, his brother was not like the brother was in this story. Um, but his father was abusive. Brian Wilson's father was abusive. Um, they, um, he, he, as I said, he had a piano in the sandbox. Um, he, let's see, what's some of the other stuff? Um, and, and the album was Smile. It eventually got released in a box set, I think, that was sort of, um, this is what I've got, so here it is. But he never got to make it into his initial vision. Um, and so I, I thought this was a really good story, but I felt like if you didn't know, I mean, you could still enjoy it. I thought it was an enjoyable story, but if you knew the background yeah. of the Beach Boys, um, that made it even um, more interesting. <laughs> I, I love this. I asked, a, Kate's going, I asked a very simple question of a woman who in theory is supposed to facilitate availability of information and suddenly everybody's a Metallica's drummer. You, remember, you know what that's a reference to? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was I got that great. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy this book a lot. Um, I It's one I'm going to keep and reread. And I enjoyed Kate Bishop's Hawkeye run afterwards. I've only got it in paperback. Uh, I, I personally highly recommend this book because I enjoyed it. Um, I, I felt sorry for him that he was such a screw up, but I think that he's a victim of his own issues that really need to be fixed. He's a broken guy. He reminded me in this a lot of uh, movie Ant-Man. Okay, yeah. Like they have so much in common. Yeah. They have the commitment issues. They're making their own issues, but you feel for them the whole time. You know, they they have a character arc of development that's really good. Uh, but yeah, they keep messing up because they're kind of, you know, again, like you said, they're creating their own issues. <laughs> so you can't feel that bad for them, but you feel for them. Uh, my favorite parts were definitely the dog. Uh, yeah. That dog issue was so good. I love yeah. that entire issue and every bit that dealt with his uh, Hawkeye's deafness yeah. was very was well done. I thought so too. Uh, I love that they actually showed signing. I love that they showed bubbles of nothing when he couldn't hear them. So you couldn't either. Like, 
I've never seen that done so well in a book. And you just don't see it a lot. You don't see that representation. So that was really cool mm -hmm. to see done that well. And it was very interesting how they did it. So that alone, I think, is worth it for anybody, you know, wanting it. It's consistently interesting and it's fun. And you have different things happening that I've never even seen, especially in a big two comic. I've never seen anything like that done. And it was done well. And he gets close to all the people in his building and you get close to them. Uh, I cared about all of those people. <laughs> yeah. So I much. Yeah. A sign of good writing that you cared about all those people. Mm -hmm. Not all those people are safe uh, in the book, which is another good sign of writing. I think mm -hmm. um, that you cared about them and you cared about if something happened to them. Um, I thought it dealt with hurricane Sandy really interestingly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, um, I wasn't aware before this book that Hawkeye was deaf. I, I don't know when that showed up in comics, but I was totally unaware of it. Yeah. I'm glad that it seems like they're going to definitely make that a part of the show coming up, okay. which is awesome. Uh, cause I think in one of the pictures you can see his hearing aid, so people are like, okay, good. Like, oh, okay. you know, that's another thing we just don't see that much and it needs to be represented. So it's, it's just, it was really well done. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that about the character. So I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if that's new or what, but either way, it's, it's cool. It's well done. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, his interaction with Kate, um, how he, how he really needed her. Uh, but he thought she needed him. Hmm. I th I think there's a story to be written about some, it, it, although if you want to just keep him like he is, he just needs a huge dose of self-reflection where he just sits down because I know a person can change because I've changed because of self-reflection. If you keep repeating and doing the same stupid things over and over again, you know, sitting down and saying, getting to the root of the issue and trying to fix it. I think there's a good story in there for somebody to write, unless he's more interesting this way as a screw up. I don't know. Well, you get a little bit of development for that too, right? Like he's starting yeah. to notice that he's <laughs> got problems and needs to fix them. And I know a lot of people uh, rag on Lemire's part of this run, but I really liked it. I thought it was great. Yeah, I always hear about people like that's the weak part. Fractions better, and I'm just like, I thought it was great. Like, like you know, who are these people? I don't know, pe internet people. Oh, like well, us. I never see that because I don't go to the <laughs> internet ever. I I loved this book because not only was the writing great, but the art was so interesting with all these watercolors of his childhood. Yeah, the flashbacks were so events. cool. Yeah. And you get a real flavor for what his childhood was like. Yeah, because you're going from like, you know, real time, present time, like this, and then the next page will be like, okay, here's your flashback of him as a child, like in the circus and stuff. And that was, that was all so well done. I love how they did that. And they even did it on the same page, like, like here he'll. Oh yeah, this yeah, that was cool. This was an issue where they'd have the present on the top page, and the and the the bottom of the page was the past, and they did that and flipped it a few times, and you learn a lot a lot about Hawkeye's uh, childhood, and you learn a lot about um, his brother, who I never knew about, and. Um, uh, you learn a lot about Shield, and here's a um, here's a part where the the childhood is top, mm -hmm. and then the real time thing is the bottom, and then there's a part that f goes into the future, um, where they have to deal with something that was left undone in the past. Uh, Hawkeye has a change of heart, and they end up going ahead and and doing this particular thing. Um, I, I thought this thing was perfect. I don't, yeah. I can't think of anything wrong with this. I, I love it too. Really and well done. When you're mentioning the, um, the future stuff. 
So, I, you know, I won't spoil anything, but everything with the kids, that whole storyline with the kids, yeah. I got to I got to tell you personally that there's so much of that that reminded me of Upgrade Soul. Oh. That alone should make you interested. The kids that were the focus of uh, yeah. Hydra and Shield. Yeah, when you read it finally, you'll be like, "Oh, like you'll know what I'm talking about." Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So one day we'll read that together. Maybe okay. next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's. I I promise that I will read that with you next year. Okay. Cool. Um, and there's more Kate Bishop stuff of her, um, as a young girl with a dick of a dad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he sucked. Yeah, he really did. Um, but gosh, I, I'm i surprised to hear that people didn't like it. And that's another reason I don't go on the internet. I, I <laughs> Well, like, I'm oh. talking like in the group. I've seen people rag oh. on it. And I'm just like, yeah. Oh, really? And I guess because they love Fraction so much that, I don't know, they didn't like Blue Bear. Uh, people like different things. But uh, yeah, I loved it. So I was happy that like I didn't, you know, I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I hear things. But no, I loved it. I thought it was oh. great. Well, I guess I'm fortunate that I never heard that because uh, I hadn't read this yet. It still had the cellophane on it, which is total <laughs> best brag move. Um, but her, his relationship with Kate in this was really good. Mm -hmm. And um, the the youth uh, telling the story about his childhood was great. The art was great. I, I highly yeah. recommend it as a follow-up to Fractions Run. I do too. And I think anybody who'd heard what I had heard, don't listen to them, listen to us. <laughs> like yeah, it's great. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, and the last book with the vellum cover <laughs> is Plunge by Joe Hill and Great Art by Stuart Immonen, who I really like his art. Uh, when do you start? Since I started on Hawkeye. I was just going to tell you, I don't know how to describe this book. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> It was so crazy that I don't know that I can sum it up. And I don't have it physically to read it. Oh. So if you want to do that, or if you can sum it up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right? Aren't you like, kind of like, how do I do that? <laughs> well, um, let's, let's look at, I, I, now I don't want to give anything away. So there's only so far I can go in the book. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like the biggest part about it. You kind of, I don't know if we should say. Yeah, it is. Um, Joe Hill wrote it. I, th I thought it was extremely inventive. Um, I, I'll just say right out that I really, really liked it uh, because the characters, it's not long enough to really get a, um, get attached to the characters like how you did in Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Um, but you, you get attached to them enough and there's a, a ship um, in some faraway place that sank back in 1983, a state-of-the-art drilling ship, the Durlith, vanished near the Arctic Circle. Decades later, it has begun sending a distress call. Decades later. Uh, tracing the signal to a remote atoll in the Bering Strait, the Rococo Oil Company hires the Carpenter Brothers and their salvage crew to investigate the ghost ship. Joined by a marine biologist and an oil executive, the brothers set out on a grim mission to learn what caused the disappearance and recover the bodies of the crew, only to find that the Durlith, Durlith <laughs> the boat, men aren't dead, even if they also aren't quite alive anymore. So it's a really well done horror story that is very original um with real consequences uh well, i can't show that because that would give it away um, i'll say the characters that you meet throughout this are all very well done yeah i you know you care about it's just like we were just saying like you kind of care about all of them in, in certain ways 
and uh, it, it makes the whole experience and the craziness that they go through like that much elevated for you. Yeah. He, he could have written the oil executive as even more of a cliche. Mm. Um, he, he bordered on a cliche, but he did have, um, I, he had more of a, he, he had a corporate attitude is, mm. uh, what I would say the oil executive that went with them sees everything as uh, potential profit. Right. Where they see things as trying to kill us. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's it's hard to explain except they go to the island they discover that the crew members aren't dead aren't yet a lot aren't really alive and i can't i can't really say more than that because i'll i'll wreck it um other than to say there's a very supernatural horror element to it that was organically it organically flowed how it came about. Um, the the character interaction was believable. Um, I thought that it, as I said, I thought it was very inventive and original. Um, Stuart Eminem's art is great, um, as usual. Um, and I, no, I can't show you that. Really, all I can show you is about the first issue. Because yeah. the rest gives it all away. Yeah, I'm sitting here like, I want to say things, but it's like, that's a spoiler. Or, I can't say that. <laughs> like, yeah, we would spoil it if we said um, if we said much more. Because there are so many interesting surprises. And so many different directions that the books take. That the book takes that I didn't expect, which is what I really like about a book because I'll be the first to say, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not real. I may review books, but I'm not a book critic. I don't look for things to nitpick and I don't look for things. I, I go in like a blank slate, like, okay, here's this book. Let me read it and absorb it. Um, I think some people go in and um, maybe try and read a deeper meaning into it, or they have nitpicks with it, or it doesn't go in the right direction for them. This is the kind of book where I go in and I just go, whoa, how did he think of that? And how did the artist nail it so well that the writer was so happy with it? Um, I personally really recommend getting this in hardcover and it's vellum cover, which is so cool. Uh, it is I, also on Hoopla, which is where I read it. Um, okay. So that's a good check out if, if you have that option. And I do want to put out the warning of, because some people can't handle this. There is some insect situations with a lot of legs and some body horror elements with that. So if that's something, you know, because a lot of people cannot handle that. If that's something you can't handle, those depictions are very gross. And I had moments where I was just reading it like, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. That's a good point. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. That's a really good point. So warning, if you're not into that or you can't handle it, like this is not for you because there's a lot of that. But um, it was fascinating and creepy and gross. And I like the ending. I want, I, you know, we were getting up to that point. I was like, am I going to like this? And I thought that was well done. Now, I do have a question and I don't think it'll spoil it. Let me see if I can say it in a way that won't spoil it. The very, very last page. Do you remember the very, very last page? I don't, but I can bring it up right now. Okay. Let me load my hoopla. I think I'm thinking of the general ending, but let me let me find that well, page. The general ending was really good. I I the general ending was really good, but the last two pages confused me a little bit. Okay, let's get there. Okay, I'm there. Almost there. Come on. Oh, I see. What, okay, hold on. Let me let me relook at these. Yeah, it's the last two pages. Yeah, yeah. The general ending I liked. I I was kind of confused with what the last two pages, how they happened. 
because well, it, it's, a, it's a jump from the the ending that you see and then you jump to the last two pages well, did you go to the page before the last two though yeah i'm looking at it right now or he's on the ground yeah that kind of yeah. makes sense going from that to the next so he got back to uh their origin place is that is he on their original i because th- he stuck around right everybody else yeah stuck. he stuck around yeah because i think <laughs> we're trying to tiptoe around this i think he this is maybe something he wanted the whole time you know oh okay that's the impression i got so you know what i mean yeah my my question is so he went back from <laughs> from where he <laughs> I, was. That is a jump. That's quite a jump. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he went back to how they, the way they arrived there. Yeah. He went back to that. That's what place. it looks like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he wanted. Well, because you know, he, he was always, you know. Yeah, he was the sketchy, yeah. obvious, <laughs> yeah, dirtbag. Um, and we're, we're bending over backwards, not to <laughs> just like tiptoeing around it. for you. <laughs> but we're also not able to, to, to tell you much, except that it's really, really good. I loved it a lot. It's fun and crazy and gross. <laughs> but yeah. we like those things, like Ito, right? <laughs> right. Um, a- and it... It was inventive. I love when authors think of things that I have no clue how they came up with it. Like I agree. Like half the time I was reading it, I was flipping pages. I was like, what am I reading? And I kind of love that feeling though, right? I'm like, what is, th- how do you do, like, what, is, like, whose brain? You know what I mean? Like, how does this happen? And then it got gross. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is, it's fascinating, but oh no. <laughs> now, you played Animal Crossing, right? Yeah. Did you ever take a bug to uh, Blathers? Just a oh, single bug? Yeah. I used to love to torture Blathers <laughs> with a bug. He would flip out. I loved that. Oh, he loves bugs. Yeah, he'd love this book. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> he'd go in this universe with his net. Someone needs to make that crossover. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those are the books we read. Um, and we have a few minutes if you'd like to, uh, thank you for sticking with us. Um, if you, uh, would like to ask us some questions, uh, Dr. Wolf tickets. Yeah. I think you'd really dig plunge. Same with you, Chris Davis, uh, crazy Jane relates with blathers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, uh, if you have any questions about anything or, um, want us to go off on a tangent about a particular subject um feel free to do it um crazy jane says plunge is very clive barker i've read a lot of a lot of clive barker and uh i i see what you you mean by that um uh, i'm surprised that anybody would choose fraction over lemire I liked them both in tandem, but I don't. This is the first I've heard that people didn't like Lemire. I, I mean, maybe it's just random people I saw. I don't know. <laughs> random dummies. Yeah, we've probably kicked those people out of the group by now, anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good. You you uh, PM me immediately when you see that opinion on the page. Oh yeah, I will. <laughs> you will be damaged on them because uh, this was uh, Lemire's. Uh, really, uh, I really liked it now. 35 watchers, 35 likes. That's good. Oh, Thank you, that never happens. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm getting out of the chat now. <laughs> I went back in. Now I see it. Oh, you you see the chat? No, I yeah, I was pop, popping in and then uh, and then that last question. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm getting out. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, here's a good one. And we'll probably end with this one. Chris Davis, good guy. Wife's looking for a new book. She likes Nail Biter, Monstrous, etc. Hmm. Any recommend? Whoops. 
yeah, any recommendations? I, I knew you meant monstrous. That's cool. Um, so Th those are two mostly, very different ones, too. Is, is it uh, kind of uh, monstrous is kind of fantasy to me, whereas nail biters mm -hmm. kind of a horror crime book? Yeah. Um, um, along the fantasy lines, uh, Isola is wonderful. Yep. If she hasn't checked that out yet, it's beautiful too. Um, I am a fan of Once and Future. Oh, me too. That. Yeah. Once and Future has been really good. Something's Killing the Children is so good. That's crazy good. I think that's so one of the most good. popular books on the news on the newsstand in comic yeah, it's, stores right it's now. Popular for a reason. It's fantastic. Yeah, something like killing the chil something is killing the children is bad. That's that's Not one for the horror element, like nail biter horror. Yeah. Now fantasy books. I did a whole video on it, uh, Chris. If you want to go back a couple of months to my channel for fantasy books. I did about a 45 minute video on fantasy books um, and monstrous is going to be in part two of that. So these are all part of the, um, they're all part of uh, the same fantasy genre. I Coda is coming out in a hardcover by Cy Spurrier. That's a great book. Because you got all the trades, right? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, I put my fantasy books over in here, so let me look. I'm scrolling through Goodreads. Um, I'm trying to think of another book like Nailbiter too. Um, I you could always read if if she likes Nailbiter because it's kind of grisly. Uh, Baby Teeth is really good. Uh, that's very grisly uh, and scary and original. Um, let's see. Uh, well, Black Magic's great by Greg Rucka. Mm, I agree. Because that's kind of um, a crime, occult, horror mixture. Uh, that's one of the best books out there that you can buy. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I wholeheartedly recommend Black Magic. Uh, let's see, what else? Have you read Bitterroot yet? I haven't. Okay, I haven't should either. I? But I, oh, okay. I, I haven't either. I, I've heard great things about it, but I haven't read it. Maybe that should be uh, not for the next show, but the show after, though. Okay. Uh, here are some good recommendations. Gideon Falls for Horror. Wait for the hardcover. I bought all the paperbacks. You're yep. welcome. <laughs> uh, Clean Room is one of my most favorite books ever. That's it's a great crazy. Book. Uh, Revival by Cra Crazy Jane says Revival. I happen to be a big fan of Revival. Uh, that is a police procedural with people coming back from the dead, only they're not zombies. They're like regular people with just a little something move, uh, missing, but they're, they all of a sudden come back to life. And it's right in this one town, I think in Wisconsin, and this one detective, this one police uh Maybe she's the sheriff. She's got to figure out what's going on. Um, Revival is really good. Uh, Lars Gunderson says Postal. That's one mm -hmm. of my favorite books ever. I love Postal. So good. That that's a high recommendation. That's a really good recommendation. Postal is fantastic. Yeah, uh, I don't know if this is. A, sorry, I don't know if this is a reach, but uh, Farmhand is coming to mind for the horror elements and the kind of fantastical elements. That's a great book. That's so good. Um, he just gave her black magic today. So that's good. Chris Davidson. Nice. That's a perfect one. <laughs> Omar, you're going to, 
you're just gonna have to wait till probably the <laughs> middle of January because I've got to read Star Wars books from now and for the next two weeks because it's the winter of Star Wars and, oh, and Tyler, Tyler. Taylor and I are going <laughs> to do a video on that. Nice. So then I will get to fantasy books. Uh, yeah, I highly, Postal covers it on all counts because it's spooky. Mm. It's, a, it's a procedural. It's got crime. Yeah. It's re And it's really well written. So I, yeah, I, I recommend Postal. That's good. It's so, got that like uh, creepy town aspect that kind of nail biter has too, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I think that's good. We can probably end on that. We recommended a lot of good uh, books and so did the audience. So uh, what do you have for me? What are you doing tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night, Maddie and I will be talking about Battle Pug on the Omnibus Collectors Network. Uh, oh, you read that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that one? How many books is in that? Uh, I mean, there's several in one, like a compugnium. I don't have oh, that near me. Have, right. yeah, that's what it's called. I don't have it near me. Do you have it? I don't. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about it. Oh, it's very fun. I think, I think it's a, a book you would like, for sure. It's very fun. So we're going to talk oh. about that tomorrow. Um... And Reed and I are going to film a video tomorrow Ooh. about our 2021 reading goals. So if you guys who are interested in my reading challenge earlier, I'm going to talk about that too, but I'm going to specifically lay out some reading goals for myself. For example, I want to read all of Usagi next year. Oh, what a good goal. Yeah. So that's one of them. Just a little tease. I got more. I got way more. And some of them are very specific. Some of them are broader. Uh, I'm also interested in putting more down. I did set goals like that this year, and I think it'd be fun. So that's what we're going to talk about. You mean specific read-throughs? Right. So there's yeah. read-throughs, or there's like, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna set a goal to read at least 20 Omnis next year. Oh, wow. You know, it's like things like that. Yeah, so, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Um Hopefully, we're going to record it tomorrow, but it'll be on my channel, The Comic Slayer. And you can check me out on Instagram at The Comic Slayer if you'd like. That's another goal to actually use my Instagram more next year. So <laughs> if you're there, you'll see it. You kind of have to get in the groove I yeah. found with Instagram. I usually do it right before I go to sleep. Um, because That's a good idea. If, if, you, if you go too long, people forget about you. And you lose interest. So I try and yeah. do it every night. And but there's only so much interesting I can take pictures yeah. of. But um, it's um, it, that is a habit you kind of have to get into to make an Instagram um, make it uh, a, a regular thing. And Omar asks, Omar Reyes asks, is Birthright getting hardcovers? Of course, it's going to. I have all ten <laughs> paperbacks. It has to. So just wait for the announcement. It's just coming. Wait, it's coming. <laughs> just be patient. Uh, and you can catch me, Omnidog, on my channel, Omnidog's Vault, on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidog's underscore Vault. And thank you to Omnicat for joining me. It's always fun. And thank you to the chat. It was a really good chat today. Uh, I enjoyed, uh, ooh, I live in hope of one day owning a legit vinyl of my Bloody Valentine's Loveless. That is one of the greatest albums ever. Have you heard that? I don't Valentine? think so. I mean, I know them, but I, I don't think I've heard that specific album. My Instagram is Omnidogs underscore vault. <laughs> You it's nailed it. Underscore because somebody else took Omnidog Vault. I don't know That's who. Very rude. Um, I was listening to my bloody Valent. I was listening to Loveless in my car on CD, and I think I have it on vinyl from back in the day. But uh, Doctor Wolf tickets. Good call. That is one of the great albums of ever, forever. Um, so thank you. Peace and love. Peace and love. You guys are great. Thank you to anybody that's watching this afterwards. And uh, we'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks with, uh, what's our topic? Feel good books. Feel good books, yep. Make everybody feel good. So thank you all for watching and good evening and
good luck. Have a good night.